looking for a trade yeah. to the second trade. Andrew Luck did well, too. I can't put doubt him with that. His vertical jump and his broad jump were, were quite incredible. Fantastic yeah. athlete. You guys touched on Robert Griffin III being a fantastic athlete and upping his draft stock. He didn't really have anywhere to go. So for me, the combine, the type of thing like that is for guys that you don't know about. So Randall hit it perfectly with Ontario Poe. You get the points for that. But moving on, Rajon Rondo on Sunday had one of the sickest lines an NBA point guard, an NBA player, for that matter, is going to ever have. He had 18 points, 20 dimes, and 17 boards. Uh, a triple-double, pretty big triple-double there. That brings into question, who's, who's the best point guard in the NBA? Let's start with you, Chance. I'm going to go with the team that I dislike wholeheartedly, and I'm going to go with Tony Parker of the San Antonio Spurs. T Tony Parker is a prototypical point guard. He dishes the ball as well as scores it. And he may have one of the sickest teardrop runners that our generation will that. ever see because he's beautiful and the way he elegates a game is, is, um, is something that I don't think a lot of point guards do. Plus he's a veteran, he knows how to win and he gets the job done with San Antonio Spurs. I'm going to go with Derrick Rose. Everybody knows who he is. Um, one thing I love about him, he can spread the uh, ball around. Point guard is supposed to be out there, run the show, lead their team, and that's what he does. He, when he gets double team, he can find the player to get rid of to pass it away and get the points out of it. He's not always looking to go to the lane and take it all for himself. He's a team player. He's looking around, and that's why I think Derrick Rose. I disagree. I, I hate to agree with you, but yes, Derrick Rose is, I, I believe Derrick Rose is the best point guard in the league. One reason being, when you look at the Boston Celtics, for example, you don't think Rajon Rondo immediately. You may think the big three, Kevin Garnett might come into hand, Paul Pierce, of course. But when you think of the Bulls, you think of Derrick Rose. That's his team. He runs that team. He's a great leader, and he's not afraid to dish out the ball. He's not afraid to be a team player in that sense, and that is why he's the best. I definitely agree, Derrick Rose, because yeah. they say MVP, Damn. and that's most valuable to your team. And that's true. I mean, Rondo does have three other guys, and, you know, Derrick Rose makes his team better. He, he has a great floater, too, just like Tony Parker. He's athletic. He can pretty much do it all. He's consistent We're at the line. We're looking for point guards, though. We're looking for true prototypical point guards. Derrick Rose, okay. yes, he has the PG next to his name, but he also <laughs> scores the most. If he doesn't score on his team, that team is nowhere. Exactly your point being that he would be an MVP caliber player, which I can't disagree with because if I if you like sports, you have to agree that he would be a most valuable player for that but team. He, he does but get Parker in his prime. Parker in his prime, but but the well, San Antonio Spurs also have the third best record in all of the or fourth best but, record, second in the West. But he does, uh, even though he does score, he averages 22, but he still gets seven assists a game, so he's still spreading the ball around and making. That's true. Better. Yeah, I totally agree. But I I feel like th with a veteran team like that, and if you can lead a veteran team to where they are now, I, that's why I picked Tony Parker. But that was just kind of. Year, well, he's so under the radar. He's so under the radar, and that's why. It's, 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 it too. could go either way. You're, Very bringing, out, you're bringing out the playoffs right now. My problem with Derrick Rose is he was a black hole in the playoffs there and he's when you're the point guard you're the best scorer pretty much the only scorer on your team and you can't get it done you're putting up 25 to 30 shots a game in my opinion if you watch those uh, Eastern Conference Finals Derrick Rose was the reason they lost so I'm going to give it to you here Chance you maybe bet. a little bias on you guys here I'm sorry but the one thing I do want to say to about Tony Parker uh, divorcing Eve Longoria come on man uh, we're going to have to take a quick break but we'll take a look at those perfect pets up for adoption at the Cooley Region Humane Society Here we have Happy, a 12-year-old rat terrier female. She loves to be pet and cuddled, looking for a nice retirement home. Lizzie is a two-and-a-half-month-old shepherd mix female. She is very playful, already knows how to sit, and she is very eager to learn new tricks. Here's a two-year-old female cat named Bliss, a very affectionate young lady. She is also already spayed. And finally, we have a male named Edgar. He is six months old and gray and white. He has a loud and adorable purr, and very energetic and playful. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Welcome back to Sports Scene here. Let's take a look at the scores as we have it standing right now. Chance is in the lead with 10, and everyone else is nipping at his heels with five points. So we're going to move on to our next round here, which it's, it's that time of year again, my favorite time of the year. You might think it's Christmas. It's not. It's March <laughs> Madness. Right now we have eight teams that have already uh, punched their ticket to the dance in the conference tournaments that are going on as we speak. 
So let's start out with you, uh, Chance. What do you think about these conference tournaments? Last night, I was over at my friend Allison's house, and I watched two of the best um, Cinderella storied uh, teams or conference tournaments go at it. Um, the Davidson double overtime win against Western Carolina was one um, that will go down as one of the better conference wins um, this year. And then I also liked the Murray State upset um, uh, yesterday as well, I believe it yep. was, yesterday as well. So uh, at you know, a four-second uh, shot Tennessee to, State, to, yeah. to win the game against Tennessee State. So right now I like, I like who's going in, and, you know, there's always a chance for Cinderella to come out of them. Um, I'm really looking forward to the Big East tournament. Um, Syracuse is obviously the front runner here, but uh, uh, Marquette's coming at their toes. And the last time they played them, they had a really good game. Uh, they have two star seniors, uh, DJO and um, Crowder, and I think that that game is going to be a really good matchup, and I think Marquette has a chance of pulling that one out. Uh, I like to focus on like the Big Ten and how just kind of a mess it is. I, there's no real defined winner. We got Ohio State, Michigan State, Michigan, and uh, Indiana is even has a chance to win the Big Ten. And they, they I think that with those teams, uh, we probably won't get a number one seed out of it. But the Big Ten will uh, possibly have a team in the Final Four that could that could really make a really make a difference. I agree. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I I'm a Marquette fan, as you can see. You know, I. I'd go with the Big East tournament. Like Hallie said, you know, Marquette has a great chance to, uh, you know, compete with, uh, you know, with Syracuse. They're a tough team, but, you know, they played well. And yeah. Big Ten will be interesting. I totally yeah, agree with you, yep. Brady. The, the Big Ten tournament's going to be by far the best tournament because of one thing. There's so much parity in that league, top to bottom. You saw the, the fourth-ranked team, Wisconsin Badgers, lost to a middle-of-the-road team there, Iowa, twice. So the parity there, that's just going to make for a great tournament. Brady, you, you got the points on that one. That was great. We'll move on. After these conference tournaments, we have Selection Sunday coming up, actually this Sunday, uh, for those seeds. So who's going to get those number one seeds? There's about six teams vying for them. We'll start with you, Kelly. I have Kentucky, North Carolina, Syracuse, and Kansas taken for the number one seeds. Standard issue. Um, I never liked the seeding for this because, especially for March Madness, it's all over the place. And there's so many underdogs and upsets that it really can go anywhere. Those are just the teams that have stood out all year and usually have the clear path to the number one seed. I have Kentucky, Syracuse, and then I have Missouri over Kansas. Which they have giving them the number one seed, and then I also have Duke over the Tar Heels. But Ooh. Ooh, I do what? pick that Duke will not do as well in the big tournament as the Tar Heels. Uh, I had a uh, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Kansas. You know, uh, they're they're all good teams, and you know, I, I don't know. I mean, North Carolina, Harrison Barnes is just you know he's a stud. I'm from Iowa. I got to I got to represent for him. So he's a True. he's a really stud player. Can yeah. we all agree heading into the tournament here that the the by, by far and above, the number one actual team who's going to get that best seed is Kentucky. Well, it's going to be During Kentucky. The they, have the easiest, yeah. they have the easiest conference. You, yep. you were going to hit it right on the head before I interrupted you, Drew. Yeah, they're going to definitely have the easiest coast into that number one seed. Um, I would like to see, you know, coming into the tournament and while the tournament goes on, how well they'll actually play as a yeah. young group. But this team has got a lot of poise and they've shown it over the season so far, and they're very athletic. I like that. But the, the deepness, the depth of the Syracuse um, Orange is going to be is going to be really hard to compete with. My problem with the Syracuse Orange is they don't have that star. And as we know, college basketball and the, the NCAA tournament is a star-driven tournament. You if, if you have that star that can take that big shot down the stretch, I don't think Hughes has it. So I think Randall had it the best there with Harrison Barnes. You want a guy like that on your team that down the stretch can take over, preferably a guard. It's a lot easier for them to get their own shots. But Even though that they have two opposed affecting them, Drew? Yeah, oh yeah, no, okay. no problem with that. Alrighty. He's going to, you know, he can get to the basket, off the dribble and things like that. Anthony Davis is obviously a Kentucky star player. Yep. So I'm going to go here with, with Randall with the Harrison Barnes. I like that a lot. That's good. But we talked about it a little bit before Chance did here. Uh, the Cinderella teams, there's always those teams. Last year we had VCU go to the Final Four, and then Butler's made it to uh, the title game the last two years. So who's going to be uh, the Cinderella teams this year? I'll start with you, Braden. I said that the Indiana Hoosiers would be the, uh, the Cinderella team. Now, you might think right away, yeah, they're a top-20 team. How can they be a Cinderella team? But consider the fact that that last season they only won three Big Ten Conference games. This has just been a Cinderella story for the process of last two, the last two seasons. So they've had a much better season this year. They have a chance at the Big Ten title, and I think that they could really pull off some upsets at the tournament. Yeah, my Cinderella team is definitely Murray State. They're, uh, you know, they came out of they came out of nowhere. Nobody could have predicted that. And I mean, they they played well against that Tennessee State game and with the comeback and the last second win. And 
That was it was just impressive, and I, I want to see how far they go in the tournament. You bet. Like I stated before, conference tournaments, the ones that are played earlier, are always the ones that develop into the Cinderella teams. And coming into a tournament,